Hello, you absolute legends. Just over two weeks ago, I released a video covering the Open Hand Foundation, the charity organization that was created by the YouTuber The Completionist and his family. I outlined how in 10 years of operation, the Open Hand Foundation has not contributed a single dollar of the money that it has received from the public. Despite the fact The Completionist, named Gerard Khalil, has been saying for many years it had been supporting various charities. And so, uh, we just every year we try to raise as much money as possible and then we go work with you know alzheimer's association of america university of san francisco um association for ftd which is what my mom had ftd so we've like worked with big and small organizations across the board According to the tax filings, the Open Hand Foundation was sitting on over $650,000 worth of donations it had received. And when me and Mutaha spoke with Gerard, he assured us they still had all of the money and were ready to donate it. However, since that time, nothing has happened. Gerard and the Open Hand Foundation have been radio silent since my video dropped. We have had no confirmation the money still exists, no confirmation it has been donated, and it more or less seems like they are burying their head in the sand and ignoring the situation hoping it blows over. The silence is deafening, but I think there is a very good reason why they are hiding. There is more to this story than meets the eye, and the situation is much worse than we had previously let on. In my previous video, I spoke about Indyland, the charity marathon hosted by The Completionist. But Indyland isn't the only charity event that Open Hand runs. In fact, it's only half of the story. Open Hand also holds a charity golf tournament, which pulls in tens of thousands of dollars in sponsorships every year. And the interesting thing about the money the golf tournament raises is that it seems to disappear. Appear. Fans of the completionist who rushed out to defend him try to claim that because Gerard hadn't spent the money, it wasn't stolen. But in my opinion, this is misguided. Not only because this argument is nonsensical, I mean if I steal $100 from you and don't spend it, I've still stolen it. It's money you no longer have, and I obtained that money through illegal means. But aside from that, I do believe the Khalil family have been stealing tens of thousands of dollars each year from charity donations on top of the fraud committed through Indyland. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. In my previous video, I didn't include a sponsor, because this is a serious situation. And that was a hefty sacrifice given that I am the sole breadwinner of my family. So it's not just my money I sacrificed, it's theirs as well. And I can't keep working on this without being sponsored, so I hope you guys don't mind. Now Legends, this video is sponsored by the military online game War Thunder. And when it comes to vehicle combat games, War Thunder is the most comprehensive ever made. Play more than 2,000 unique vehicles, including tanks, planes, helicopters and ships in heart racing PvP battles. And each of these vehicles is finely crafted to be as realistic as possible, resulting in a highly immersive combat experience. Whether you like the fast-paced action of air combat or the more tactical nature of ground combat, War Thunder offers intense player v player battles that caters to any style. Plus it offers one of the most dynamic and detailed vehicle damage models in gaming. Personally, I just like how realistic everything looks and sounds. The combat experience is definitely intense. War Thunder is free to play using my link in the description, and is available on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. And for new players or those who haven't played in six months, there is a large free bonus pack waiting for you, which includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, an exclusive 3D decorator for your vehicles, and much more. This is only available for a limited time, so be quick. The Indyland Charity Marathon hosted by The Completionist began in 2018, but since 2003, the Khalil family has been hosting a yearly golf tournament called the PBD West Convenience Cup Challenge. PBD West is a business founded by Gerard's father, Charles Khalil, in 1992. Now, despite the Open Hand Foundation website saying it has been fundraising since 2003, there is no record of the Open Hand Foundation existing before 2014, when it was registered as a non-profit. If you look at photos from the golf tournament before this time, there is no mention of Open Hand. In contrast to 2015 onwards, where signage clearly states it's benefiting the Open Hand Foundation, earlier years simply showed that it was benefiting frontotemporal dementia. I assume they meant to say they were benefiting dementia research and not dementia itself, as that is quite a strange thing to say. No one can possibly know where that money went from these golf tournaments before 2014, so at this time there is no point in speculating. But from 2015, we know the money was supposed to be going to the Open Hand Foundation, and we have their tax filings, so from here on out, we can begin to draw some solid conclusions. The main way the PBD West Convenience Cup Challenge appears to raise money is via 
via sponsorships. Brands will pay the Open Hand Foundation to appear on banners and signs throughout the golf course, along with having the opportunity to set up tents and stands and have their employees play in the tournament. It seems to be mainly used as a networking or social event. On its website, the PBD West Cup even tells us what these sponsorships cost, showing that different tiers give different benefits. Before 2018, this golf cup was the only event raising money for the Open Hand Foundation, so the tax filings should give us a pretty good idea about how much money it brings in. From 2014 to 2017, filings show the Open Hand Foundation received between $30,000 to $60,000 per event. This is likely underreported, but we'll get to that later. For now, let's just assume this is accurate. From these years, we can get a pretty good approximation of what this cup normally raises. In 2018, Indyland began, and for its first year, it raised $55,000, at least according to Gerard. This money was also supposed to go to the Open Hand Foundation, so naturally we should see an increase in yearly revenue, which we do. In 2018, Open Hand had a yearly revenue of $113,000. If we assume that $55,000 came from Indyland, that leaves $58,000 from the PBD West Cup, which is in line with previous years. However, something strange happens in 2019. In 2019, Indyland raised $109,000, double the previous year. In theory, this should cause a drastic rise in the yearly revenue for the Open Hand Foundation. But mysteriously, revenue hardly raises at all. In the 2019 filing, Open Hand only raised $123,000, which means that somehow the Golf Cup now only raised $14,000. What's also interesting about 2019 is that it's the last year that Indyland, or The Completionist, publicly stated what Indyland had raised in total. From this point on, they make no mention of this, which is strange. You would think a charity event would state how much they raised after it had finished, and they did proudly do this for the first two years. But then, as soon as the tax filings became weird, we started hearing nothing. We can deduce how much money was raised, however. From 2020 onwards, Indyland fundraised through Tiltify, which shows the total donation amount. On top of this, all bits, subs, merchandise, and indie game sales were supposed to go to Open Hand 2. And that's why we're here today. Bits, donations, subs, buy the shirt, buy the coin, buy indie games, all that stuff. All of it is going to the benefit of helping others for this charity event. So thank you for joining us. As I just mentioned, Gerard never tells us what these extra revenue sources amount to. But we do get a clue from Indyland lead coordinator, Michael Barrett. He refers to an article talking about Indyland 2022, which raised $90,000 via direct donations through Tiltify. The article author uses a different Tiltify figure to state that Indyland raised $80,000. But Michael clarifies that with those other methods of raising money, they actually raised over $100,000. So at minimum, we can add at least $10,000 on top of whatever is raised through Tiltify. However, again, I suspect this figure is likely higher, which is why they don't specify what it is. Now let's look at 2021. Indyland raised $113,000 in direct donations. Then we take off around $2,000 for Tiltify fees. On top of this, every single year the Syzygy Foundation, the charity founded by Jamie Lee Curtis, gives a grant to Open Hand. In 2021, they gave them $25,000. If you add these together, you get around $136,000. But shockingly, for the entire year of 2021, Open Hand only received 136000 Which means, again, the Golf Cup hardly raised anything at all. But we know that's not the case. Because we have photos of every single year the Golf Cup has been running since 2014. And we know how many sponsors they have and what they paid. And not only that, this means all the bits, subs, and all of that extra revenue that Gerard promised us would go to Open Hand wasn't sent over either. Now in this video, I'm just focusing on the golf tournament, and I won't go into all of the ways the completionist and his family seem to be stealing donations, but I suggest you keep a lookout for an update video by some ordinary gamers, who will release even more information on that very soon. So let's look at the 2021 Golf Cup sponsors. It's had two diamond sponsors, which were $8,000 each, one platinum sponsor, which is $7,500, and six gold sponsors, which are $6,500 each. Just from those three tiers alone, ignoring all of the other sponsors, all of the other registration fees, all of the other money raised from the raffle and auctions, and ignoring any direct donations which should be received during a charity event, we already have a total of more than $60,000. 
$1,000, and all of that money seems to have vanished. It certainly didn't go to open hand, or at the very least, for some reason, isn't showing up on their filings. All of the filings from 2019 onwards show the same pattern. Almost all of the revenue raised can be attributed to Indyland, and hardly anything seems to come from the Golf Cup. Despite photos clearly showing it has massive sponsors paying up to $10,000 each. Certainly, tens of thousands of dollars at least in donations every single year are going missing. The question is how and where. Everything raised from Indyland is through electronic means. This makes it very hard to hide, and any accountant will immediately pick up a discrepancy between what the bank statements show and what they are filing with the IRS. But the revenue generated from the Golf Cup is different. The website has a page called Where to Send Payment, and it literally just tells you to write a check to the Open Hand Foundation. No matter what account the money is going to, however, we know it isn't going to Open Hand. In my previous video, I was very careful not to make claims I couldn't prove. I wanted to make sure that when bringing up this sensitive subject, I didn't come across too aggressive, in order to limit the amount of backlash. But I think at this point, I've uncovered enough to confidently say that something very criminal is happening with the Open Hand Foundation. We have the completionist and the Open Hand website lying for years that the Foundation has been supporting organizations when it has never supported a single organization the entire time it existed. We have more than $650,000 sitting in an account somewhere that still hasn't been donated or accounted for. And we have hundreds of thousands of dollars from the golf tournament that has simply vanished into thin air. And this is why I think the completionist and the Open Hand Foundation have been completely silent. Anything they say at this point is probably going to be used against them, simply because the truth is looking really, really bad. Almost everyone is screaming at them just to donate the money, which should be pretty easy to do. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Why not just, okay, the jig is up, just donate it. If you supposedly still have the money, just donate it. What, what's the excuse for not donating it yet? But they don't want any more attention being drawn to this. They hope people at worst will think that Indyland raised some money and didn't donate it for a few years. They can live with that. What they don't want is people, especially the authorities, looking into the golf tournament and all of that sponsorship money. I've heard many people say this could just be negligence or ignorance or laziness. But I can assure you, this is not the case. This fraudulent activity has been going on for at least 10 years. And it's not just Indyland. Both events were lying and saying they were contributing funds when they weren't. The Golf Cup was taking in donations without contributing any of the money it raised long before Indyland even started. And when Indyland came along, it did the exact same thing. This doesn't happen accidentally. This absolutely needs to be investigated by the authorities. And the only way that happens is if the Open Hand Foundation is reported. I'm going to put a link to where you can raise a complaint in the description. And I hope that many of you consider taking a couple of minutes to do so. It's obvious Open Hand isn't in a rush to respond or donate the money, so at this point, all we can do is wait for those with power to step in. Also, once again, use my link in the description to download and play War Thunder. It's free, it's fun, and it's awesome. Plus, using my link will get you a bunch of free bonus goodies, so definitely click the link and check it out. Thank you so much for watching, you legends. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video.